So there is a very specific way how relativity is taught in books. They provide you with the Lorentz matrix and using that matrix they show you how Maxwell's equations remain invariant under Lorentz transformation. And they never derive those relativistic equations which is really not the way you should learn relativity since the whole idea revolves around the fact that anything inconsistent with the Maxwell's equation has to be ditched and the only kind of transformation that preserves those equations are the same kind of transformation that preserves space-time. And from that property of space-time, we calculate Lorentz matrices and derive relativistic transformations. In this series, I will try to maintain that sequence of information. As for this video, I will show you that how changed Maxwell's equations look like in Galilean relativity. So what is Galilean relativity? An observer when moving in a constant velocity does not really necessarily see the same thing as a stationary observer because of his relative movement. Their relation is known as Galilean relativity. In this picture, O prime frame is moving with respect to O frame in X direction with a velocity v0 giving x prime equals x minus v0 t. We can generalize the direction of the movement and take the vi component as responsible for the change in xi component giving xi prime equals xi minus v0 i t. And since time is a parameter in three dimensional space, t prime will be equal to t. So what happens to our Maxwell's equations when viewed from x prime frame? Now before we attempt to see the effect on those equations, we need to deal with few terms. Our three dimensional derivative operator del prime, partial time derivative del del t prime, charge density, current density, electric field and changed magnetic field b prime. We begin by taking a function f in unprimed coordinate and take derivative del prime. We can expand gradient in component form where e i prime will be unit vector along the i axis. Since f is not a function of x prime, we use chain rule giving us del t with respect to del x prime and del x with respect to del x prime. We use the fact that time remains invariant, so t prime equals t make derivative on both sides. Since x prime does not make its explicit appearance on the equation of time, partial derivative with respect to x prime will be zero for both the cases. We also write x as viewed from primed frame, make derivative on both sides and from that we see partial derivative with respect to x prime will be 1. We plug in both our values and get grad prime is same as grad, which is surprising since x changes under coordinate transformation but the partial derivative didn't. So we have one of our terms ready. We proceed in the same way as before for t prime. Since f is not a function of t prime, we also have to use chain rule here. Using our previous definition of time, we can find partial derivative of time with respect to t prime is 1 and partial derivative of x with respect to t prime is 0. Now you might have confusion regarding del x prime with respect to del t prime. How did it become 0 and not v prime? Well, it's partial derivative and not total derivative. And since x prime was a function of x and t, t prime did not have any explicit appearance in it. So the partial derivative does not have any value. Now we use our worked out values and uh, del del t prime becomes del del t plus v0 with partial x which is again interesting considering time was same in both frames. So we have both our differentials ready. Charge density being a scalar remains same. So rho prime will be same as rho but not the current density since current density depends on the velocity and using the same process but now with total derivative we can find that v prime is equals v minus v0 use that result in j prime which gives us j prime equals j minus rho v0 so now we have transformations for both our source terms if we want to find about electric and magnetic fields we have to have equations aside from maxwell's equations that contain both electric and magnetic fields that will be our Lorentz force equation. And this is perfect because force can be related to the coordinate derivatives so that we can use Galilean transformations. Now force is mass time acceleration and acceleration remains unchanged in Galilean relativity. So force in both frames will be the same. So we equate our Lorentz equations in both frames. Let's keep this on top for now. 
Now, here comes a problem. You might be tempted to keep electric field unchanged. Since the distance between two points and charges remains unchanged in Galilean transformation, but it brings more problem with it. So when we substitute E prime equals E, V prime cross product B prime becomes V minus V zero cross product B. It looks fine except you can't really substitute where the expression for B prime is needed since it involves cross product in both sides. So we make a choice to keep magnetic fields equal and when we substitute this in Lorentz equation it gives E prime equals E plus V zero cross product magnetic field. Okay. Let's make a list of what transformations we have done until now. Our gradient operator remains same. Partial T depends on gradient. Charge density remains same. Current density depends on charge density. Electric field depends on magnetic field. And magnetic field remains the same. Now we are set to deal with Maxwell's equations. We have our first equation which is the restatement of the Gauss's theorem. We replace the electric field and when we expand we have a term divergence of V0 cross B. Since it is a divergence of a cross product, we can use divergence identity. We replace A with V0 and V0 being a constant has zero derivative. So divergence of V0 cross B vector is the same as taking out V0 and doing curl over B. And when we rearrange, we see that Gauss theorem as seen by a moving observer is not quite the same as it was in the static frame X. For our second equation, which proves the existence of paired magnetic dipoles remains the same because both three-dimensional differential operator and magnetic field remains the same. Our third equation is the Linge's law of electromagnetic induction. We replace both electric field and partial time derivative operator and expand both sides. Now, if you take V0 out of curl operator, you will be making a huge, huge mistake. We will do that properly using properties of curl operator on cross product. Replace A vector with V0. And now we have two terms, none of them involving any cross product. Substitute this form into original equation. Eliminate same terms from both sides. Use the fact that divergence of B is zero. And surprisingly, this equation remains exactly the same. Our last equation is the modified form of Ampere's law. When we substitute each term and expand, it doesn't really look quite nice. However, since V0 dot delta is a scalar operator, we can take out V0 cross product as a constant. And a little bit of rearranging will give you four extra terms, which will be seen by an observer in X prime frame. And with this, it is clear that not all Maxwell's equations remain unchanged under Galilean transformation. So Galilean relativity fails to be compatible with electromagnetism. And it is revealed that electromagnetism is not a part of three-dimensional space-time geometry and time. So we look for higher dimensions.